Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the chemistry guru. Now in organic chemistry, differentiating tests or identification tests for functional groups is an important part of answering organic chem questions. So in this video, we want to talk about the distinguishing test for carbonyl compounds, which will include aldehydes and ketones. All right, the distinguishing test or identification test for carbonyl compounds for both aldehydes and ketones, what we can do is we can just add 2,4 dNPH at room temperature and the observation that we are expected to get will be a orange precipitate. Now this reaction is actually a condensation reaction. Later when we write out the balance equation, we will be able to appreciate that. Now the first thing we have to clarify is 2,4 dNPH. What is 2,4 dNPH? Now the full name for this guy is actually 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine. So why is it called dNPH is because if I look at the name in full, dinitrophenyl hydrazine. So the DNPH is here, DNPH. So the short form for this guy is of course 24 DNPH, but actually it is recommended that students should remember the full name because the full name for this guy is tied directly to the structure and vice versa. Because if I ask you to remember 24 DNPH, you don't know what is the meaning of D, you don't know what is the meaning of N and P and H. Actually, it is pretty useless. So what we should do is we should remember the structure and the full name together or concurrently so that it is easier to remember both structures as well as the full name. And actually, once we have the full name, then of course, 2 for DMPH, it is a bit trivial. It becomes very straightforward. So what we want to do is we want to try to draw out this structure. Now, if I look at the name 2 for dinitrophenyl hydrazine, the only portion that gives us a little bit of an issue or we don't really know what this guy is, is actually hydrazine. Now what is hydrazine? Now hydrazine essentially looks like two ammonia joined together, NH3, NH3 joined together, but if I'm forming a nitrogen-nitrogen bond, then each of the ammonia must lose a hydrogen. So hydrazine looks something like this. It looks like an NH2 bonded to another NH2. So hydrazine will be something like this. And in terms of the functional group, actually we are only unfamiliar with hydrazine. The rest of these guys, we should be familiar with it. Now the next one will be the phenyl group. Now phenyl group, of course, we know that it means my benzene ring. Now benzene, as a parent, it will be named as a benzene, obviously. For example, chlorobenzene, bromobenzene, methyl benzene. But as a substituent, the name of the benzene will change to a phenyl group. Now nitro, which is the next portion that we want to discuss, nitro is also pretty simple. Nitro will just be an NO2 group. And dinitro just means that I have two nitro groups. So I know that I have nitro group and I have two of them. So it will be NO2 double. And how about this number 24? 24, remember this number represents the position of the nitro group. So if I say that this is a 2,4 dinitro group, then I know that there are two nitro groups. The first nitro group will be attached to position 2. The second nitro group will be attached to position 4. So in principle, we have all the information for us to piece everything together. So let's try to draw out this guy, 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine. So we put down the hydrazine first. Usually what I like to do is I like to draw out the bonds involving the hydrazine. I will draw the N H1 in this way. So this would be the first NH2. Now the second NH2, usually how I will draw is I will draw this N here and then draw this hydrogen in this way. Now by right this is hydrazine, NH2, NH2. Then the next thing we have to do is remember I have to put in the phenyl group. Then once I have the phenyl group, actually this phenyl group will replace one of the hydrogen. So I need to take away this hydrogen and I replace this with benzene. So I have to put the benzene here. So once I put this benzene here, this will be phenyl hydrazine. Now once I have phenyl hydrazine, I can put in the dinitro group. In terms of the position, with respect to hydrazine functional group, this carbon will be position 1. This will be position 2. Actually, this is also position 2. So later when we put the nitro group, you can put in either side. It doesn't really matter. So this will be position 3. This is position 4. So let me take this away. 
we want to put in the dinitro group. Now, as mentioned, we have two four dinitro group. Where's the first nitro group? The first nitro group is attached to position two. So my position two is here. So the nitro group will be here. The second nitro group, it is attached to position four. Then I have position four. I draw another nitro group here. So this guy will be my 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine because this will be my nitro group at position 2, nitro group at position 4, this is the phenyl group, and this is hydrazine functional group. Now remember, it is a lot easier if we remember the full name together with the structure, and then we use it to reinforce each other, it makes it easier for us to remember both the name as well as the structure. Once we get the hang of the full name, because we remember the structure at the same time, then the short form 2,4 DMPH, it is very easy to figure out. Now next, we want to figure out what type of reaction this is involving the reaction between 2,4 DMPH with a carbonyl compound. Now the type of reaction, it is actually a condensation reaction and we are required to write out the balance equation and figure out the structure of the product. So let's have an example involving this carbonyl compound. This is actually an aldehyde functional group, now CH3C double bond O and a hydrogen. It works exactly the same way for any ketones as well. So this is just an example using an aldehyde functional group. Now, recommended when we write out this condensation reaction and when we want to draw out the structure of the product, recommended what we should do is we should point the C double bond O group towards the hydrazine functional group. So instead of drawing the C double bond O pointing upwards by convention, what we do is we make the C double bond O group turn sideways so that when it is pointing directly towards this NH2 group, the hydrazine functional group, later it is easier for us to figure out the product. As mentioned, because this reaction it is a condensation reaction, effectively what will be eliminated as a small molecule would be water. So what we do is simply I just box up water which will be here. So actually this water will be removed. Then the product's form is literally this portion on the left-hand side. And I have a carbon. This carbon will be double bonded to this nitrogen. And this portion on the right-hand side will be joined together. So literally, I just join these two groups together and I remove water. And in the product, the bond that is formed is a C double bond nitrogen. So let us try to draw this product. Again, it is very straightforward. I just need to copy this portion, which is a CH3 bonded to this carbon here. This is the carbon. And this, I have a CH bond. So I put a CH bond here. Now remember this becomes a C bonded to a nitrogen via a double bond. So I draw a double bond to this nitrogen. So now I'm here. So later I just draw the right hand side. I just copy this thing wholesale on the right hand side. This nitrogen will be here, then it is bonded to our NH, which is in turn bonded to benzene. So the benzene will be here. Then I have the two nitro group and the four nitro group that I have to put in. And the product is of course water as the byproduct. So this will be the product that is being formed. And the functional group for this guy it is an imine functional group. But what is more important is we recognize that. Since this is a condensation reaction, water is being kicked out. Then when we draw the product, it is literally this carbon double bonded to this nitrogen. So this fragment here is actually this portion. And this fragment here will just be this portion. So I just join these two together via a C double bond N. So in principle, this condensation reaction, it is very straightforward. I can draw out this product very easily. And this is the product that will give us the orange precipitate observation. All right, so that was the discussion involving the differentiating test for carbonyl compounds using 2,4 DMPH and the type of reaction, it is a condensation reaction. Now, if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.